question that's been on everyone's minds. I've been emailed about it. I've been questions about it. I've been DM'd about it. We're talking about the USMLE step one, and this is your ultimate study guide. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Hafsa Slayman, and today I thought I would talk to you a little bit more about the USMLE step one. So we're gonna start off the video by talking about the most common resources, and then we're gonna end up by talking about the high yield topics. I think this is gonna be a great video for all of you because I have been collecting this information for years now. I have been talking to people from around the world. So I'm talking international medical graduates who have made it in America. I'm talking about US students and what they've been to told by their universities. I'm talking about graduates from my own school who have done the USMLE. So we're gonna discuss this. Okay. So first and foremost, all right, so I've got my backpack here right next to me and I've got all the juicy USMLE stuff. So I'm gonna pull up all of the resources that are high yield. Number one, we have got this book. You would have seen this book on so many videos. This is the USMLE first aid step guide. Everyone seems to use it. It's got everything. So this is basically everything you need to know. It is a massive book with an impressive 792 pages, but that includes the index. It's got a shit ton of information. And what's really cool about this is that every year it gets upgraded because every time someone finds a mistake or they find a mnemonic or something that would make this content heaps better, they add it to this. So they send an email in and they add it to this book and they make an upgraded version. So as you can see, look at this book. It's got some beautiful diagrams. It is honestly a really good book, but I would say one of the drawbacks of this book is that I feel like you need to know your knowledge beforehand. This is very summarized and to be honest, it is a little bit hard to read but it's definitely got everything in there. So that's your number one resource. Number two, probably my favorite resource, it's helped me with my university courses as well, is The Fundamentals of Pathology by Hussein A. Sattar. On a first glance, it looks like a little book. And if you look inside, not many diagrams, not many photos, it's got some histology pictures, but look at this. It's got dot points. Um, ignore my beautiful notes. I'm a little bit OCD sometimes. But um, look at that, it's got dot points. It's a little bit questionable. When I first saw this and opened the book, I was a little bit like, hmm, this is a little bit dry. I don't know if I'm gonna like it. But you use it in conjunction with his slides. And I must say, Dr. Sitar has made amazing slides it's not usually my style. I like things that are very visual. I like looking at diagrams and his videos are basically PowerPoint style. And then he draws alongside and mixes in all the high yield substances together. I thought it was absolutely 10 on 10. I reckon this is honestly my favorite resource and it's got all the high yield stuff from every system in the body. So that is your second and possibly the more important resource and this helps you understand the text better, especially the high yield topics. Okay, next, for microbiology, everyone tends to use this. I have my notes in a little book, so I've created this on my own, but this is from something called Sketchy. So I've taken screenshots and made notes on every single diagram. Microbiology is a bit of a hard topic. It involves a fair bit of memorization in terms of knowing, for example, the bacteria like off the top of my head, cholera, it's oxidase positive. And you need to know these things. And sometimes it's a little bit hard to like rote learn all of these things. So what I absolutely love about Sketchy is they have a diagram. Also shout out to the guys at Sketchy. They must have been so creative to come up with a beautiful story associated with every microorganism. And for instance, with the cholera, with the Vibrio cholera diagram, it shows ships, it shows uh, lieutenant, at least that's from my memory right now, 
Let me try to bring up the photo. But basically he's wearing a ring and whenever you see any sketch with that ring, it means it's oxidase positive. So even if you don't remember whether the microorganism is oxidase positive or not, if you remember that diagram, if you can remember that little detail of the ring, you automatically know that the bacteria is oxidase positive. So these three are probably the highest yield resources. Apart from that, as with any exam, you need to be practicing. So number one question bank is UWorld. UWorld has about 3,200 questions at the moment. What's super interesting is that, I kid you not, they keep updating the questions. So from time to time, you will notice that there are some questions that are being removed, especially if you review the questions that you've answered. And you will notice that there's a fluctuation in the number of questions. So it was about 2,800, I reckon, and now it's about 3,200. So it definitely fluctuates and that's a good thing. That means they're regularly updating and increasing the number of questions there are in the bank, which is beautiful. It has amazing explanations. It explains to you the right answers and the wrong answers. So for me, it is definitely a 10 on 10 resource with that basis. One of the other question banks that I've seen with some of my friends is the Amboss one. I would say the cool thing about the Amboss question bank is that it highlights the key terms that you need to be focusing on. So that's quite handy, but UWorld is still number one. And then to check if you're improving or not, and also to know your baseline. Do NBMEs, it highlights where you need to be improving, if you're at the level where you expect to be, and if you're ready to sit the test. I've told you about all the common resources that I've heard from my friends and people all over, but here's a really cool thing. So, most questions have the classic presentation. And what's really cool, which an American physician actually told me about, is the rapid review section. So you find that, literally over there, at the end of the first aid book, so it's got things like the classic presentation and right next to it, what disease it refers to. I've got here an example. So if you've got red currant jelly sputum in alcoholic or diabetic patients, that indicates Klebsiella pneumonia. That's an example. But that helps narrow down your vision in a question. Another thing that I think is even more cool is the top rated review resources. So, what this is, is basically a guide on the resources that you should use. So, question banks, as I mentioned earlier, it's got A plus for the UWorld QBank. A plus means it's like basically number one, number one resource you should be using. So literally, you can see A, B resources, and you've got it for literally every single thing. You've even got it for things like anatomy. So like, if you're struggling with anatomy, like yours truly, you have resources here listed out that can help you with anatomy, with embryology, with microbiology, literally anything. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses in different areas. There's no shame in that. But these are a list of resources that you could be using if you want to supplement your study. Another thing which I completely forgot to mention to use is Anki. For those of you who are looking for free USAMLE resources, if you have an Android phone or a laptop, you can download Anki completely free. And on Reddit, someone was super useful and put a link over there to download a bunch of flashcards that someone created. These flashcards basically have everything from the first aid book, from Pathoma, and you literally just click away to test your understanding. And you can have different number of review cards and new cards that you can study every single day, and that is meant to supplement your study. Okay, now for the next part of the video, we are gonna talk about the study guide. What's important, what's high yield, etc. I have attended a bunch of lectures and I've spoken to so many people about this. I've also attended a lecture at crazy o'clock, and by crazy o'clock, I mean 2 a.m. by Tao Li, talking about what is important and what's high yield on the USMLE. Okay, let's start with basics, and possibly one of the least favorable uh, topics out there, public health. So public health has everything from laws, biostats, epidemiology, ethics, patient safety, quality, all of these things. What's high yield in this is biostats 
and epidemiology questions. They love those questions. And from what I've seen, the trend on UWorld is things about calculating specificity and sensitivity. Next, we've got anatomy. So I'm absolutely atrocious at anatomy and it stresses me out a little bit, but throw traditional anatomy outside. And I don't mean throw it outside. If you want to be a surgeon, obviously you need to know everything, the ins and outs, because you don't want to injure a patient. But in terms of USMLE step one, anatomy, you need to know high yield things. And by high yield, I mean things that are affected in common surgeries and stuff for traumatic injuries. What would you, so if they go like, oh, like someone stabbed a patient here, what is most likely to be affected? It's your spleen. And, but they would give you like, um, uh, they might give you things like from rib number, whatever, to rib number, whatever. So you need to know the organs associated with that and what is more likely to be injured. Also, don't forget, CTs, MRIs, ultrasounds, they love that shit. So know how to label the basic ones. Just have a look at it, know the orientation. I know with CTs, it gets a little bit confusing because I always have to remind myself when you're looking at a CT, it's like you're looking at someone, someone's feet who's lying down in front of you. I hope that made sense to all of you, but that's how I remember it. So psychiatry basically encompasses everything from psychology, sociology, and psychiatry, and also a ton of the psychopharmacology questions. But what's high yield is personality, psychosomatic, sort of questions. Drugs are definitely quite important and up there. Substance abuse and eating disorders. Pharmacology, apparently that's crammable. I don't know if I agree. I am struggling with it. pharmacology. But with pharmacology, some of the major categories are autonomic nervous system, central nervous system, antimicrobials, anti-cancer treatments, and cardiovascular treatments. What is high yield is the mechanism of action clinical uses. So like what would they use in the surgery and how it works, like lidocaine. Why is lidocaine used with adrenaline? I got a question about that. And then today while I was in surgery, the doctor was asking me questions about it. So it's definitely things that are quite practical and also toxicities. And I would say the common side effects. UWorld is great for that especially with diabetic drugs. I personally struggle with that. I feel like UWorld has beautiful tables which explain to you exactly how it works. Next, we've got biochem. Biochemistry is something that makes everyone scream. Thankfully, not me because I've done it in undergrad, but apparently it is also crammable. But what you need to know about biochemistry is the stuff that links everything together. I feel like with the US Emily in general, they enjoy things that link everything together, linking anatomy and biochem and everything. So maybe don't focus on every little thing in every single pathway because it is quite challenging to remember and especially in a short time frame. The high yield stuff is the vitamin deficiencies, diseases of genetic errors, and the key regulatory enzymes, and also lab techniques. Physiology, one of my more favorite topics because I feel like you can draw it out and it makes sense. And the first aid book has some beautiful diagrams. So with physiology, definitely diagrams help and vignettes usually have the pathophysiology of a disease. They also tend to like hormones. Okay, micro and immunology. Not many people are fond of that. It scares them out. One thing I wanna remind all of you, micro is not just bacteria. You've got bacteria, viruses, parasites. Focus on how you can distinguish between different microorganisms, which organs it attacks, how it spreads, and how to diagnose it. Also, it is quite helpful to know the vaccines associated with different conditions, immunodeficiency diseases, they are hot topics, everyone loves them, and your immune response to some bacteria. So like tuberculosis, they love it. They ask many questions about it, how it works, macrophages, what they release, you know, the pathogenesis. So if you see many questions about a certain topic, that would definitely be something important to know. Now, last but not least, pathology. 
This is one of the most important things and it is humongous. And this book, amazing for pathology. So basically you want to know the hallmarks, you want to know the most important things about different conditions, like signs and the symptoms of different conditions, uh, classic presentations, that's what usually comes in different questions. So even though in clinic you can find, I mean, no two people are the same, so you can find some discrepancies between different conditions. Sometimes they don't present in the classical way, but in terms of the exam, more often than not, they give you the classic presentation. And don't freak out when you get pictures with, um, when you get pictures with the vignette. Usually, if you focus on the age, the sex, the classic presentation, you can come to a conclusion on the condition without even looking at the diagram, but obviously that's quite helpful as well. That's it from my USMLE step one guide. Hopefully all my research has helped all of you. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below or text me on Instagram on at Layman. These videos that I'm creating are videos that I wish existed before I started researching them. So if you guys want a specific video, like literally about anything, comment below, let me know what you want to see and hopefully I can make a video about it. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.